Did you know the World of Outlaws once ran an indoor sprint car race? I've got that story today on what turned into be a massive disaster. Plus midgets at Merced, more sprint car updates and more. Let's go. It's Thursday, November 23rd. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Happy Thanksgiving, friends. Hope everyone has a great holiday out there and you get to enjoy a little bit of time off. Over in the Dirt Tracker merch shop today, hoodies are here, just like the one I am wearing currently. Uh, they are performance style hoodies. They're a little bit lighter. They're black, and they've got this uh, kind of cool new Dirt Tracker art on them that says your daily dose of dirt. Um, I've got sizes large to 3X in stock and ready to ship. On top of that, everything in the merch shop is on sale today for a little Black Friday deal. And that includes these new hoodies. I, uh, I put them up and they are immediately marked down along with all of the hats, the shirts, the stickers, and everything else. And as an added bonus, any order will get a free can koozie no matter how small. If you just order a single sticker, I will also throw in a can koozie. You can check out the new hoodies and take advantage of the sale over at shop.dirttracker.com. You do not need a coupon code. Everything is marked down and ready right now. And don't forget to, if you are a Dirt Tracker channel member, you can get an additional 10% off merch anytime with your coupon code. And that includes an additional 10% off this current sale. Uh, for the show today, I wanted to dig into another little bit of history and tell you another story. Indoor shows for dirt racing, not super common during the season, but we do have a few. The Chili Bowl is obviously a big one. We've got midgets indoors at Ducoin. And we're also just a few weeks away from the Gateway Dirt Nationals, where we'll again have super late models and modifieds racing on a very small track inside the Dome in St. Louis. That's where the Rams used to play football. But did you know there was a World of Outlaws sprint car show indoors back in the early 90s? In Tampa, Florida, the Rays baseball team plays inside Tropicana Field, which used to be the Florida Suncoast Dome. It was open in 1990, and in 1992, the World of Outlaws came through in February for a pair of shows. They took around, uh, they took place around the same time of year we now have Dirt, uh, dirt Car Nationals, so a little bit of a different version of Florida in February. Organizers built in the neighborhood of a quarter mile track inside the dome that was sort of ovalish. You can see in this photo how it's not quite round. It's got some strange corners with weird places in the walls. Uh, Paul Archa, who is a photographer who helps me out all the time, uh, immense help for these videos. Uh, he was there at the event and he sent me a bunch of images. The plan was for a two day outlaw show plus appearances by four NASCAR drivers who are going to run a special match race and sign autographs. Ken Schrader, Kyle Petty, Michael Waltrip, Ernie Irvin, along with Chris Economaki from Speed Sport, all jumped on Rusty Wallace's airplane and flew from Daytona, where they were there for the 500, to Tampa to participate in this event. Each driver was promised $5,000 to appear, but when they showed up at the Dome, they were told the checks they were given were not good and were instead handed an envelope with $1,700 in cash. So instead of $5,000 times four guys is 20 grand, they got 1,700 bucks. The group promptly got back on their plane and returned to Daytona without racing. The reason for the rubber checks was because the spectators didn't turn out, and that combined with high operating costs for the event meant there wasn't enough money coming in to cover those expenses. The Friday night show was kicked off by Steve Beitler grabbing his one and only career World of Outlaws quick time, and he did it with a 360 under the hood. Surprisingly, he did not end up making the night's main event, which was won by Steve Kinzer. According to Speed Sport, Tampa City officials had to get money together to be able to pay the Friday night purse, with Kinzer getting $3,500 for the win. Their hope was that it would get the drivers to actually show up for the Saturday show after that disaster, uh, you know, after the disaster that they had on Friday. And all of this uh, happened with the All Stars racing not far away at Bubba Raceway Park. The drivers did return, though, for Saturday, but again to a poor crowd and more trouble on the way. So, uh, Sammy Swindell took the $8,200 victory over Bobby Davis, but according to a bunch of folks, the teams there were never paid their part of the nearly $40,000 Saturday purse. A story in the Tampa Times said that the promoters expected 15 to 20,000 spectators each night, but that they had only sold somewhere between three and 4,000 advanced tickets. They needed to sell 34,000 tickets just to break even. And I guess the walk-up crowd that they had hoped for never materialized. And you can see in several of the photos how sparse the grandstands look. Uh, there were definitely not a lot of people there. This was the first time that an indoor sprint car race like this had been attempted, but it went so poorly it was never tried again. There were other sprint car races from other series run in places like the RCA Dome, but they were usually either on concrete or paved surfaces and not on dirt. Looking through the photos Paul shared with me, uh, this photo of Steve and Sammy that I have on the screen right now was the only time he said he ever caught them together in an image actually both smiling. 
A big thanks to Paul and Word of Outlaws announcer Johnny Gibson for that help in providing me information for this show. Uh, I'll also link below to a Mike Kirchner speed sports story from 2021 that has a bunch of details on this as well. Amr said last night, the USAC Midgets wrapped up their two-day show, and we were also treated to 360 sprint cars. That sprint car show was the final one of the year in California, and it was Ryan Timms going the distance for the win. He held off a brief mid-race challenge from Tanner Carrick, who settled for second at the checkered. Uh, Gage Garcia joined them on the podium. It was Timms' first wing sprint car win since the Hockett back in September. It was his fourth 361 of the year and sixth total uh, overall sprint car win. His uh, racing season, though, will continue this weekend at Ventura in the Keith Coons Midget he's been running all year. The Knights USAC Midget win went to already crowned series champion Logan Seavey. He started outside front row and was around pole sitter Jake on, uh, Andriotti for the lead by lap seven. Behind Seavey, the action was really good. Incredible racing. Uh, at one point, announcer Chet Christner said, uh, quote, I can't tell you where to look. There were sliders everywhere, plenty of big movers through the field. Uh, Justin Grant went 10th to 2nd, Tim 7th to 4th, Carson Macedo went 11th to 5th, Corey Day 15th to 7th, and the Knights hard charger was Brian Wiedemann, who went 21st to 12th. Uh, Merced, very, very great surface, r uh, really good racing. Uh, with the win, CV's top 10 streak is now 21 straight races. He's led laps in four of the last five features. He'll try and repeat his Turkey Night success this weekend from back in 2021 when he was the event winner. The midget teams have today out for the holiday, and then they've got practice Friday night at Ventura. A quick uh, update on the sprint car stuff we talked about yesterday. I mentioned Robbie Price and his unsure future after running the last few seasons with the Sides Motorsport 7S that was on the road with the World of Outlaws. He reiterated yesterday in a Facebook post that he does not have a ride currently for the 2024 season. So it obviously means he's on the hunt and the sides car now needs a driver. I've not heard anything about the future for the 7S or what direction they might go. Also, Amanda Hogstead uh, commented on my video yesterday and said that she and Bill Rose will be back on the road next year with the World of Outlaws. We didn't see Bill towards the end of the year as he dealt with some injuries and then had surgery on his neck. He's now recovering from that successful procedure and is on the mend. Thanks to Amanda for jumping in with that update on Bill. Uh, if you're looking for something else to watch today, check out David Gravel's live stream from last night. Me and Jeremy Elliott were on for the first hour or so talking all sorts of different sprint car topics. And then after that, he had Tanner Holmes on for another hour or so. Watching the Tanner part, sounds like he doesn't quite yet have his sprint car plan set for 2024. Like I mentioned yesterday, I've been asked a ton about that, but uh, Tanner said not quite there yet. But he did tell Gravel that he'll be back at the Chili Bowl in January. Tanner drove a Chad Boat car last year, ending up 16th in a Saturday CMA. He said he'll announce his full Chili Bowl plan soon. I'll link to uh, Gravel's show below in the video description if you want to tune in at some point today. All right, that's it for the show today. Make sure to hit up DirtTracker.com to see the weekend streaming schedule and all of the other cool dirt racing stuff over there. Hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll see you right back here on Sunday.